what is up wichita we are back with another episode of coffee break and i am your host officer chad ditch with the public information but i'm here with my co-host officer trevor macy what's up man i miss public you. information i miss you too you had a uh a nice week off i don't know you? if it was nice but it was it was a week off yeah well, tell me about that Where, what'd well, you do i got uh we've been blessed and, and we moved into our new house finally so very exciting yes it was uh boxes upon boxes remember that song like years ago that was like i got racks on racks on racks yeah i had boxes on boxes on boxes <laughs> like you don't realize how much stuff you have until you have to move it yeah you know, when you when you move, right, mm-hmm. you obviously probably um, disassemble your bed and everything like that. What do you do with the screws and the bolts and everything? Mm. That's a good question. I think I usually just put them in like the bedside drawer. Right. In like a drawer, right? Stand, yeah. And it's just and so like I know a, they're there. You put it in a bag or you just leave them loose? I just leave them loose. Yeah. I want to know what y'all do. Someone, someone put in the comments what y'all do because that's what I did. And um, did you lose them? I didn't lose them, but it, somehow they ended up with a bunch of other screws in another bag with uh, for other beds. And uh, sounds my like wife, you had a few screws loose. I did have a few, <laughs> a few screws loose, but my wife got on to me. And she was like, "Why didn't you just tape them to the back of the headboard?" Oh, I said, "Oh, that's, that's a I good said. idea." I was like, that's a great Why idea. didn't she say that while you were taking the bed apart? <laughs> that's what I said. I said, "Where were you 13 months ago?" Seriously, yeah, that would have been a good idea. So yeah, man, that's smart. It was nice, man. I got my my bed back. I got my mattress mm. back. So, um, yeah, man, it was it was good. That's cool. Yeah. So, do you ever think? Did you ever think good Thanksgiving? Yeah, I did. I uh, went to Oklahoma, uh, visit my girlfriend's family, and then my whole family got sick, so we canceled Ooh. our our side of the Thanksgiving. So. I'm still getting over a little bit of a whatever. Whatever. Whatever everyone else is getting. Because yeah. literally everybody, I yeah, feel bro, like everybody's getting sick. Yeah, I got back on Monday and like everybody is like still like sniffling and coughing. Yeah. It must have been Gucci in my house because. Yeah. You guys, I mean. We were yeah, good. Knock on wood. It's it's going around. Something's mm-hmm. going around. So, so It's not that, COVID though. I got to test. It's not COVID. That's good though. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Was that the first time meeting the, the girlfriend's family or? No, we've met several times. Oh, okay. I got you. What did yeah. they do? Turkey, ham? What did they do? Turkey and ham. Oh, okay. All of it, man. Baked or fried or? Uh, uh, well, or one, so we went to two different dinners. One, it was baked mm-hmm. or roasted. And then the other one, it was uh, fried. What's the difference between baked and roasted? Uh, wow. That's a loaded question. Is it? It's well, loaded? I don't know. So I don't know what. I don't know what roasting see, is. Yeah, right. So I see roasted, right? And it's when you put the turkey inside of the little Yeah, and you put the thing on top and then the whole thing goes in the oven. Right. Right. So like what I do is I use the bottom portion of that <clears throat> and I put my turkey in, but I put foil on top. It doesn't cover the whole thing. It just protects the top part of the bird mm. from getting burnt. And then I remove that like the last hour to get that cooked a little bit. I'm but gonna Google You Google roasting versus baking. Because I think quick. it's the same thing. Now smoked Smoked turkey, obviously, that's going to be something like outside in the smoker and everything. But Roasting versus... Ba- roasting involves cooking foods like meat, potatoes, chicken, and vegetables that already have a solid structure. Baking refers to foods without initial structure. Oh, so it's just the type of food. Oh. So you're not... You can't bake a turkey then. So you can... So I've been roasting a turkey. Yeah. Roasted. I mean, I got jokes for days. <laughs> you roasted. <laughs> you roasted that turkey good. Oh. Uh, but bro, we, yeah, we had a big old Thanksgiving spread, but it was just the at the new house, uh, right? Yeah, that's it awesome. was amazing, man. It was amazing. So that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, bro, um, we got something. Anything coming up? We've got the uh, Battle of the Blood, Battle, Battle of the Blood of the Blood. There we go. Battle of the Badges <laughs> Blood Drive. Man, I can't talk. Um, I gotta get scheduled, man. That's coming up. Uh, December thirteenth is the kickoff. Okay, but you can start signing up for appointments right now. Gotcha. So for those of you that don't know, it's an annual event uh, with the Red Cross. You can donate blood as well as fire, EMS, uh, Cedric County Fire, Cedric County Sheriff's Office. We're all participating. Yeah. But you, when you donate, you can denote who you're donating for, whether right. it's police, EMS, fire department. We just want to do police. Yeah. You, yeah, just, you, just, you, just, you want to do police. If you're watching this podcast, do police. Yeah. So we're going to get like 12 people from this. <laughs> um, We've been up there, bro, but yeah. But you basically, at the end of the whole blood drive, it goes till January, um, and whichever organization raises the, the most uh, blood donations or has the most people donate in their name We're gonna go to Hawaii. wins. What are we I, don't, I don't, I don't remember a, what the prize is. Just a slap is. hand? We get a high five. <laughs> good job. Either way, man. It's, good. it's for a good cause. Yeah, it's a great cause. They're at a critical need right now. Yeah. I know I need to go donate. Um, if you haven't donated blood before, it's super easy. It is super easy. You get um, sleepy. A little bit. Yeah, it depends on what you do because there's different levels too. Because oh, you can do okay. like the regular 
just standard blood donation. You can do the whole blood. Like give all your blood? Which is what I typically do. And they take the blood out Mm -hmm. and they separate it from the plasma. Oh. And they pump the plasma back in. Oh. And then that does not make you tired or that does? It does. And the plasma is super cold when it goes back in. So you get real cold. But Hmm. they get more, uh, they're they're supposedly, they get more usable uh, blood from that because they're just getting the red blood cells, which is really what they need. Right. Um, so if you can do that, do it. Um, there's all sorts of ways to donate. You can, you can, uh, there's check out the information on our Facebook page right now, Twitter page. We'll, we'll, we'll keep talking about it leading up to the blood drive, but absolutely super important, um, to donate. Right. That's awesome. Speaking of super, super important, uh, we've talked about this on the podcast. We've talked about this man's team on the podcast several times. Uh, we have the officer Nate in the building, mm. um, the leader. The one um, and only. I don't know about the leader, but he's the main guy basically for the hot team, uh, which consists Not the of the hot team. It's the hot it's unit. It's the hot unit. Yeah. We should call him the, the hot team. The team is already in there. That's true. Um, but yeah, he's got a four person unit. Um, but yeah, they do amazing things, man. They're always super busy, always mm-hmm. working, getting resources uh, pushed out there uh, to the homeless population. So, um, without further ado, man, let's take a refill let's and then, get them uh, on here. Get them on here. We'll be right back. All right, we are back with Officer Nate Schwedel. How are you doing today, sir? Pretty good. I appreciate you coming. I know you're super busy. Yeah. So you are known as Officer Nate to like yep. pretty much a lot of people here in the yeah. department and in, in, in the community. So uh, we start the podcast off with the same question. Okay. Have you seen the podcast? A long time ago. Okay. Long time ago. Okay. We've Which been, episode did you watch? Do you I remember? don't remember now. Yeah. <laughs> they all kind of blend together. Yeah. Right? Anyway, so. We've been solid like seven months now, almost eight, coming up on Something eight. Something like that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm proud of proud of you for Oh, hey, we've been doing it We're together on top of it. Yeah. Um, so we started it, man. So everybody could get to see who the people are. Right. Not just Officer Macy, Officer Sweetall, but actually talk to us about who people are. So yeah. uh, tell us, man, who's who's Nate Sweetall? Who's Nate Sweetall? Like outside of the uniform or it, whoever you want to be. Oh, you can talk to us about um, personal, professional, whatever you choose to, to talk about. I don't know. Uh, just a guy uh, like the married. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no kids. Uh, like to uh, enjoy going to live music concerts and stuff, okay. and uh, off duty. Um, uh, I like to get involved in a lot of uh, charities and organizations to uh, still be involved in the community that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a big, I had a little brother with big brothers, big sisters. He turned eighteen and doing well. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. And how long have you been on the department? Twenty one years. Dang, wow. Twenty one years. Yeah. Man. Where all have you worked in that? Time. I worked my entire career in the downtown area working with homeless. <laughs> wow. No joke. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as a patrol officer, and then I uh, jumped into community policing, still working with the homeless. And uh, that was my number one issue that I had to deal with. And then that morphed into we need a, to a special unit for this to go citywide. Yeah. And that's yeah. when, you know, I started to look at a new concept on police homeless outreach teams. Yeah. So that's kind of your claim to fame, if you will, is is the, the homeless outreach team. Can you kind of, for people who don't know, how did that get started? Um, what's your guys' uh, focus? What are you yeah. doing? So like I said, I spent my entire career downtown working 911 calls, and half of them were homeless related. Mm-hmm. And we just saw them. we take them to jail. they get back out, go back to the streets. we do it again the next day. And it was just a revolving door. And we knew we needed to do something different. We kept seeing the same homeless people year in and year out. So yeah. um, 2011, um, a city in Colorado won a huge international award for community policing for implementing a homeless outreach team. So mm-hmm. I went out there, got trained in that, brought that information back, made an SOP, a policy procedure, and an ordinance, and then presented that to command staff. And then we went for a pilot program for a year. And in 2013, it went live. And then uh, we were pretty successful. And we've been going ever since so wow. dang man so wh- what's a what's a day-to-day like for you day-to-day so we're the number one main dispatch unit to the city that for homeless related calls like mm-hmm. campsite pops up you know trespassers uh, welfare checks that type of thing mm-hmm. um, we do focus on trying to not put people and homeless people in jail system because we know that doesn't work you can't right. rest your way off homelessness so we'll try to divert minor charges and lieu of services like He's drinking in the park. Instead of taking him to jail for drinking in a park, uh, we'll take him to inpatient treatment for substance abuse. And now we're working on the real reasons why he's homeless. And right. and then maybe if we can get him clean and sober and he gets out, 
now we can get him a job, get him into a housing program. Now he's not going back to that park and drinking anymore. We're not getting those 911 mm -hmm. calls. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win for everybody, the police department, the community, and then also the homeless person. Yeah. How has the yeah. uh, kind of the role of the homeless outreach team evolved since its, its beginning stages until now? Because I'm sure it's not the same now as it was when it first started, right? Right. Yeah, there's just a lot of new things that we've implemented that makes us more efficient. I mean, when we first started, we technically only had two of us, mm. and we were just, it was just too much work. Then we got three. Um, that was, you know, too much work. Uh, we had one guy trying to work nights, so we had coverage on days and nights. And well, I was trained not to do that, but I did it anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you should listen to the people that know what they're doing. <laughs> right. um, and so that was an epic failure because people, the homeless are sleeping and, or they're in their shelters and they don't want to be bothered when yeah. they're sleeping. Right. Um, so uh, we, we make sure everyone works days, Monday through Friday, eight mm -hmm. to five, when the providers are open. And then um, we were s still trying to catch up and stay on top of things. And then uh, city council came in and wanted us to have a fourth officer, which was awesome because yeah. we needed it. So now, and then now we've expanded to four of us for the awesome. for the city. So that yeah. is awesome, man. That is awesome. You guys had a uh, um, intern right recently. Yeah. Housing. Well, we actually had um, we actually had the, for some COVID money, ESG monies. Mm -hmm. We actually had four interns at one time okay. uh, oh, through a social work program for the master's program at WSU and Newman, and they would help. With a lot, we were doing a lot of stuff that wasn't necessarily police related. They right. were signing people up for housing programs and mm -hmm. doing the paperwork for that. Um, that's stuff that you know a social worker could could probably do. So uh, we partnered with those social workers that come in and do a lot of that work with us. And we still have one right now. And then we're getting ready to involve and change into a grant that we got through the Department of Justice called we call it Project Hope. And uh, I decided we wanted to partner with an agency. We chose the housing department, mm -hmm. and that's going to bring on three more interns, uh, three social workers, and three case managers. That's wow. awesome, man. So a total of nine that's going to be yeah. working. It's going to really expand what we're doing. So we got some recruits that are getting ready to graduate at the end of this month or the beginning of next month. So when I came out on the streets, we always heard about the homeless outreach team, knew that you guys did a lot. When, we, when those troops come to you know, uh, dealing with people in the hotel motels and stuff that are actually homeless living there. Um, and they pass that information off to you guys. What happens then or what do you, what are some information to give to the to the troops that are getting ready to come out on, on how to relay information to you guys? Right. I mean, number one, you just, you can go and they can find our email and they can email us the information and we'll do follow up right. with that family or that individual and then get them connected. Because we're basically, we're a resource expert with referrals. I mean, we have this brochure that, that we give out that has hundreds of uh, resources that we have that help people, families, mm -hmm. individuals, people are maybe are getting ready to become homeless. Um, and that's really what our job is. And it's hard for the average officer to know right. all that, right? Yeah. So that's why we have our special unit. Yeah. So we get a lot of uh, Facebook messages and comments and things about about the panhandling situation around Wichita. And I know there was recently some ordinance changes mm -hmm. um, involving that. Can you talk a little bit about the situation and what you guys see uh, specifically in your unit regarding like yeah. panhandling around town? Yeah, this is my soapbox part. Um, <laughs> so, well, first of all, I want to say that um, it's a it's a myth. Most panhandlers are not homeless. Mm -hmm. yeah, they might oh. show, hold the signs up, and we find out later they're not, or they're not a vet. They're just holding the signs and saying yeah. that. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, there's a study done in... Uh, it was a few years ago, but they studied about a couple hundred uh, homeless people and asked them, hey, what do you, where does the money go to? 93% of them admitted, 93% admitted they went to drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. Yeah. Because you can get free food, you can get free clothing, you can get free shelter, free health care, all that right. stuff already, through, especially through the brochure that we have. But yeah. no one's giving out you know, drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. and so that's where we see a lot of the reasons why that they're panhandling and going towards. So... We want to make the community aware that, you know, help us because we're helping these people get off their addictions. And when they're giving them money, it's going towards their addictions mm -hmm. and making it worse and making our job harder. So, um, you know, and also uh, in 20, so I want to say 17, they did make panhandling a First Amendment right, which I would agree, holding the sign up as long as it's not right. offensive, it, it yeah. is a First Amendment right. So I agree with the courts. Um, so we had to get rid of our panhand laws, but we do make it illegal to step out and do an exchange. And it's a misdemeanor, not only for the driver, but also the person that's doing the exchange. So I just want drivers out there to, to know that. Um, yeah. 
if you want to give, give to those agencies and those charities that are using the money for its intended purposes, yeah. getting right. them the case management, getting them off the drugs and alcohol, getting them into housing programs. That's, you know, where the money probably mm-hmm. needs to go. Yeah. Well, a lot of times the, those the incidences there can cause accidents too, because you've been at like Kellogg and Armour and stuff where people are stopping to give money and then it's causing a, um, mm-hmm. an accident right there. So. Yeah. And right when we passed our ordinance, we actually, it was like, reached like, like that month or something a uh, panhandler got hit by a car and and, mm-hmm. and died oh man so um so that was that was interesting that you know we were talking hey this is a safety issue and then that actually happened yeah wow. so yeah. during the during the cold months obviously we always get calls right and you, i'm sure you guys do all the time uh with weather changing and stuff and wanting to know what you guys are doing and i know you guys are always out there mm-hmm. um what do you say to the people that they see the same person underneath of a bridge or, or sleeping somewhere during the winter time, and they're always covered up. What do you say to those people that say that you're not out there doing something? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we are we get calls of welfare checks all the time, and we go and check their welfare, and we're always, always offering services. Yeah. But there's a lot of times that the homeless don't want to go into the shelter for various reasons. They have addictions, and you can't use inside the shelter. There's mm-hmm. rules. Um, and so those are the tough cases, you know, that – uh, they're refusing to go into those shelters, but we are making contact and we offer every single time we make contact with homeless, we offer, even if they, they've said no five or six times before to us, we continue to offer because sometimes things change and maybe yeah, yeah. they decide, you know what, it's really cold out here today and I need to get off the streets or I don't feel safe anymore. I'm going to go ahead and take Officer Nate's uh, advice and, yeah. and, and hit them up on some resources. Is there anything, um, I know like some facilities uh, across the city, you have to be sober for a certain amount of time. Is there anything that you guys, that they people have to be either sober or not committed certain crimes or do they get these resources no matter what? Are you talking about from us? Yeah. Yeah. Like we'll, we will help anyone no matter what mm-hmm. in regards to the background. Now there's restrictions on certain programs like Section 8. Um, there are certain felonies that they can't have a Section 8 voucher. Mm-hmm. That's just mandated by the federal government. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, shelters, you could be um, intoxicated and and go in there as long as you're not disruptive, you yeah. know. So there's rules and regulations and, and different for different uh, or uh, providers that we use. Mm-hmm. So it will help any, everybody. So do you know what the numbers are for, like, the, the homeless population in Wichita? Uh, this last point in time, Cal, um, we really ramped it up and, and – and, uh, made it more effe- uh, effective or did a better job at doing yeah. it. It's, it's ran through United Way. And uh, we actually visited 35 more locations than we did previous years. Mm-hmm. So our numbers appear to look like they're a little bit higher by, I want to say 11%, but it was we're at 690 wow. okay. um, homeless. Mm-hmm. Man. I seen a lot cleaned up though. I remember when I first came out, like you would have, like McLean would be full of homeless encampments yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And now it's really cleaned up out there. Um, mm-hmm. One thing Trevor and I wanted to talk about is kind of the elephant in the room, and I'm sure you get this a lot, but um, do people give you a lot of crap about the acronym? No. <laughs> <Hot>. <laughs> yeah. I get the, yeah, we get the jokes all the time. Yeah. Does it bother you when people say hot team? Because that's a, yeah. Because the team is already in the hot. Yeah. I know. Right? It's, it's like, like AT- ATM machine. Yeah. Or yeah, I try to, try to, uh, try to call it the, the hot unit. Yeah. I want to say. Hot Ooh, unit. I like that better, yeah. 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 Or when a uh, dispatch keys up and says, "Hey, I need a hot officer. Any hot officer available?" And then like everybody keys up, like, "Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm yeah, available." I'm good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Well, today is um, National Package Safe Package Delivery Day. Okay, so we play this a game. This is a stretch. Dude. This is a big stretch. Your segue right? is such okay. a stretch. But go ahead. So, um, so that made me think of delivery. Well, then sometimes it's not delivery; it's DiGiorno, right? So then I started thinking, top four or top. Frozen pizzas. Okay, so we play a game called One okay. Has to Go. All right, so we put them up on the board. You got Tombstone, DiGiorno, Totino, Totino's, and Red Baron. You got to get rid of one of those frozen pizzas forever. Which one are you going to get rid of? Of those? Yep. Forever? Uh, DiGiorno. See, that's what I said. DiGiorno. Yeah, I don't like, I don't. I it's like thin. Cr- I like thin crust. piece. I don't like that. Oh. Yeah. Well, I I also will add that it's expensive. It's like seven bucks. That's a good point. And Red Baron is my favorite. I I was very poor in college. Yeah. I worked like three jobs and paid for my schooling and stuff. Uh, I, I gotta go to Tino's because it's that's Totino's. all. They're like yeah. there's like a nine nine cents yeah. or a whole pizza. Yeah. I lived off that in college. I would come home from class and cook a Totino's party pizza covered in sriracha, eat the whole thing yeah. for a meal. That was my. That was my go-to. Yeah. Yep. Which right. one are you getting rid of? I'm getting rid of Red Baron. You can't get it rid of. <laughs> because a German World War One fighter pilot has no business making pizza. Why? 
does. He can be different. I mean, he can, but like, it's just not good. Red Baron to me is the good. best. You get you get a lot of bang for your buck. You get that crispiness from um, the thin pizza or whatever. Mm-hmm. Growing so. up, my dad got Tombstone all the time, and that pizza cooks really well. It does. It's, the, it's uh, pretty good. You know, and DiGiorno, I mean, DiGiorno, it's just, it's the classic. Yeah. It's mm. fancy. Man. Well, we appreciate you coming out here, man. I know you're yeah. super busy. I know you do a lot for this community. I mean, everywhere we go, they're like, hey, can we see Officer Nate? Does Officer Nate have anything? <laughs> so it's like, yeah. um, here he is in the flesh. So, uh, but yeah, man, we continue to thank you and uh, keep doing all the great work that you and your sure. team does. So thank you. Thanks for you. bringing me on here today. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. We're going to get a break and uh, get a refill and we'll be right back. Well, that was Officer Nate, man. Great interview, man. Great yeah. interview. He gets, uh, he's probably done more interviews than many officers on this department. I, oh, I don't yeah. want to say anybody on this department, but well, I think if you, he's if done if a you lot. St- if, yeah, if you stick with officers, yeah. You know, because obviously a, a captain, especially like a captain over um, the person's crimes and stuff. Right. Like, they're going to do a lot. Yeah. But yeah, as far as, as far as like line level officers, he's done a ton of interviews yeah. with, with pretty much any media outlet yeah. out there. Yeah. And to devote all to devote all your your time your career, I mean that mm-hmm. shows just how passionate you are um, his about team, helping and changing. Yeah. His team too is nationally recognized yeah. for for many years now. So man, I came um, I was uh, coming back from KFDI to drop off uh, Christmas Crusade presents and stuff the other day, and I was like just north of Central on Broadway, and I saw them out there um, talking to mm-hmm. homeless people and, and passing out resources and stuff. So. They um, stay busy. Yeah, and it was cold. I mean, they're yeah. out there in the elements, man. They're 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 trying to help out people as much as they can. It is yeah. awesome. There's obviously a need for them to do what they do, and it, it's good that they got that extra member now too. Yeah. So now they can uh, um, further their efforts. So. Yeah. Speaking of extra member, I told you I got. Um, obviously, I was packing the house and everything like that, so I was off all last week. But the chief is now here. He is. And yeah, bro. He was uh, doing interviews with uh, Cake. Or yesterday or a couple of days ago and man, just see all the memorabilia and rewards he's gotten over his career was yeah. like awesome like just to see it all filled and everything i know right. there's no like there's no interim person in there and everything like that there's somebody living right or there you yeah know what I mean? yeah yeah no yeah the, the seat is filled and yeah and we got a new guy in charge mm-hmm. and i'm excited to see what happens yeah um i think he's uh he's off to a good start so far and yeah excited to see what uh which direction he takes our department in. It's going to be weird come come February, man. If Philly and the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl, mm. it might be a house divided. Awkward. Yeah, right? So, but it's awesome. I'm glad he's here, man. I'm glad he's here. So, yeah, um, hope he's getting settled in. We're going to have to we're going to have to give him some good uh, Wichita food spots to yeah, eat. Yeah, well, he's definitely, first thing he's got to do, obviously it's going to get cold, man. He's got to know about chili and cinnamon rolls. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't already. Facts, yeah, I, I mean, I told him about it, but. I don't think he was thinking I was serious. And so like, do no, you, Chief? I'm I'm serious. Back on the chili and cinnamon rolls mm-hmm. thing. Do you eat the chili with the cinnamon roll? So I'm the odd guy, man. I put the cinnamon roll in the bowl and then cover it with chili. Yeah, I'm really, yeah I do. That. So <laughs> why? Because we. I just it's, that can't be good. It's delicious. It's delicious. I didn't even realize there was a connection with cinnamon rolls and chili. Um, until a couple of years ago, people started talking about it. But then looking back on my childhood, every time we had chili at school, it came with a cinnamon, cinnamon roll on yeah. the side. But I never mixed the two. Like, you, it, you eat the chili. Do you remember it? Yeah, I remember it. Okay. Because so the cinnamon rolls at school were kind of hard on the outside. Yeah, you had fair. to, like, peel that outer layer to get to the, the gooey middle. That and was, I think we've talked about it on the podcast before, but are you a crackers and chili kind of person, or what do you do with your chili? Oh, so I, uh, I uh, put cheese on top, like a ton of cheese, mm-hmm. shredded cheese, just a... You wait for it to melt. A little bit of melting mm-hmm. and then still some cheese on top. You know, stir it a little bit and then just crush up a bunch of saltine crackers yeah. on top and eat that. That's See, so I need good. to do that again because it's been a hot minute since I've done that. But uh, since I've met my wife, I met her 17 years ago, um, it's always been uh, white rice chili on top cheese see yeah, i've never tried that but you mentioned that the other day and that yeah. sounds that sounds good it is good man. it is good it's almost like a cajun style chili yeah then like a red I think beans she and got rice it from, type because uh thing. she's a military brat and they lived in japan for 10 years so, oh, okay um i think she picked it up there or it could have been um uh, from her heritage she's hispanic so mm. uh, but i don't know i don't know how to ask her. i'm really bad at cooking rice well like i have a rice cooker so that like a it. dedicated rice cooker yeah is it worth it 
a hundred percent. I was worth thinking it, of getting bro. one. Yeah, hundred percent worth it. Now, what I, I I always mess up is Spanish rice, because <clears throat> like you have to cook the rice first with that, and then season it properly and everything like mm-hmm. that. And I think I've talked to several people that cook Spanish rice like all the time, and it never comes out the same. Whether it's like extra fluffy, mushy. See, my rice always ends up mushy. Yeah. And I don't know what to do about that. And you do you rinse your rice before you cook it? No. You're supposed to, right? I, so when people people say that, and I've seen people do that, yeah. and it's recommended, but every time we rinse our rice, it does not taste the same. Really? Yeah. It's mm. to me, it's like going to that that hole in the wall Hispanic the Hispanic restaurant and everything, um, where you don't go inside to eat, but you can go through the drive through, and the food is just flavorful. It's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. good to know. I'm gonna have to invest in a rice cooker. Yes. Yes, you should. So, anything else coming up? Um, I don't think so. I don't man. think so. You got the holidays. You got the Christmas. Holidays now. coming Any, up. Yeah. Yeah. Gearing up for all that. December we got a lot is of, tomorrow. We're recording on the Wednesday. After yeah. The we weekend. got shop with a cop coming up. Very important. This weekend. We got so two weekends in a we'll row. Shop there. with a cop. Yep. So out there taking photos and uh, and. Uh, videos that's a, such a cool event so it is man it's so cool and one thing like last year i was a part of it and you had kids that you know were there from um homes that you just were a little bit more unfortunate than mm-hmm. a lot of people and you asked them hey what are you looking for what do you want and it was just clothes yeah you know, food for my refrigerator and stuff so uh that was like so humbling right and experience and stuff and you know those those are the kids that still we would like okay well let's get you what you what you want as far as toys and stuff yeah. like that and then we could we could do the food and right, everything right. else we can do that on the side that's us yeah. you know so yeah it's I'm really excited. cool really cool to see the look on those kids faces when yeah. they when they get those things so yeah and then we'll That'd have be a fun a, event we'll have christmas crusade all those gifts go back out i think like uh the week of the 12th okay so it's gonna be a joyous holiday man it's yeah be cool. i'm excited i'm excited too so but i think we need to wrap it up man probably got to get back to work i gotta put my dress shirt back on and stuff and get ready for yeah, another important meeting. important stuff to do. <laughs> I do so but until next week man we'll see y'all later remember like share subscribe um and feel free to leave us a comment at policeweb at wichita.gov so until then peace bye